Hello everybody, how are you doing today? It's Adele K, uh, CEO, founder of uh, Future Teacher Physicians. Thank you for watching all my videos. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for each and every one of you guys that have seen most of the videos we've made. Uh, we really, really uh, appreciate your comments and uh, we're going to make this big. Uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, we're going to continue with the uh, videos that we'll be making uh, on series on uh, metabolic acidosis uh, and alkalosis. Today I'm going to go over metabolic alkalosis. Uh, I know this is a very challenging area uh, for a lot of students and uh, we're going to try to make it as easy as possible. Like I said, you know, I appreciate your comments. I keep them coming. That's what gets me going. And uh, before you know it, we're going to have a whole lot of videos come for you guys. Uh, one more thing I want to tell you guys is always visit our website www.ftpinc.org which is where you can find a lot more information about what we do. And this will give you a good idea uh, where we are and uh, where we go with this. But thank you very much. Like I said, you know, I'm still using Step Up to Medicine with a couple other resources, uh, which, you know, as time goes on, I'll let you guys know. So today, we're going to go over metabolic alkalosis. Like we always do. We start with definition. We kind of want to go over some pathophysiology. What is causing the problem. We want to know what the clinical features is, what the patient is going to present with. What is the diagnosis. What the lab is going to tell us, just a little bit. And uh, how do we treat, right? If you don't treat, we're just basically wasting our time. So today's topic, we're going to go over uh, metabolic alkalosis. I shared with you guys, if you haven't watched uh, metabolic acidosis video, I implore you to go watch it. Uh, click on the link down here below. Uh, I also want to employ you guys to go back, if this is the first time you're watching the alkalosis part of this uh, series, go back and see an introduction to metabolic acid-based disorder in general. It will give you a better sense so that you're actually on par with me right now that we are starting this series. Like we always do, we like to cheat in medicine, don't forget about that. Our favorite formula. And I always told you guys, if you know this, just forget. This is the end from the beginning. This is the cheat formula. That's all you got to memorize and you're always going to look like a star. I'm going to make an effort to repeat myself a little bit so that we can read real concepts that we're trying to uh, get across to you guys. We always say, always write metabolic on top and respiratory at the bottom. Extremely important. That is gold. Okay? So what is metabolic alkalosis? It is metabolic. So it has to be something going on metabolically in your body in terms of how the body's pathophysiological processes are going on. Alkalosis, like we always say, is from the word alkaline. And from basic chemistry, if something is not acidic, or neutral, or basic, rather than saying basidosis, and then it's on to write. So we call it alkalosis, which means the pH has to be high. Very high. Remember, you have to memorize just a few key things that I've written over. If you don't remember, we can just uh, quickly just write on the side here. We said normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. That's your normal blood pH. You don't want it to fall way too low or way too high. If it's going way too high, we go into the alkalosis section. If we go way too low, hey, buddy, stop. You're about to make me acidic. So, automatically, the pH is going to be high, which is this guy right here. Um, I'm trying to make my videos a little bit more interesting. So, we're going to use more coloring in this video. We deal with pH. It's going to be very, very high. So, alkaline pH will be obviously automatically greater than 7.45. And what I will actually do and incorporate now into my videos is uh, kind of like test questions. They're more like uh, review cases to kind of get us, you know, at the end of the video to get the whole point. So automatically, the pH is going to be very high. But why is the pH high? We say it's alkalosis. 
Arthur loves it. That's in the money we're going to talk about at the end of this. But let's get the concepts down cold. We're going to be dealing with metabolic. So right now, I do not care about the bottom. We'll talk about it because it's a compensatory mechanism, but that will come later. Metabolic means the pH has to be high. The only way the pH is going to be high is from bicarb. Bicarbonate is going to be elevated and automatically, guess who's going to be lost? Oops, my fault. Hydrogen ions. Now, how does that happen? That is where the pathophysiology. Let's start with causes first, okay? Now that I kind of went over the brief uh, um, review of this formula, now I want us to do something very, very easy. We're going to split that brain up into two. Oh, no, not that way. Don't do that. That's a bad idea, okay? <laughs> We're going to break metabolic alkalosis into two parts. And this is a very tough concept for a lot of it. It took me a while to get a grasp of it, and I'm trying to kind of share this little secret with you. Medicine is all compartmentalization. If you split your brain into little sacks and put information in there, everything makes sense. You just grab a sack, you use it, you spit it out. People are like, wow, look at you, this guy is smart. Then you put it back in there, you screw it in. But if everything is all jumbled up, it's a mess. So, the key to metabolic alkalosis is urine chloride. I mean, this is big. I mean, this is serious. Urine chloride. I'm going to write it again. Urine <coughs> chloride. I think the color sounds a little much better, right? Don't you think? So, there are two types. Saline sensitive and saline resistant. Saline from the work Cell is what? It's just salt. Sodium chloride. Every time we always took things around to make you guys. It's just a two dollar word for salt. So for saline chloride, we're gonna start with what will be the urine chloride. So when I go to the bathroom and I pee, but I put a little cup in there and I measure the amount of chloride in there. If the chloride is less than 10 milli equivalent per liter. It's just telling me something. However, on the flip side of things, I did the same thing. Yo, dude, do you pin the cup for me? Peace out. I check the urine chloride in the lab, and it's greater than 20 milli equivalent per liter. It's telling me something. What is that something? What we allow you to be able to retain urine um, chloride so that you're not losing it. So something is telling me this is definitely lower than this. So that, that means automatically this is less than 10, maybe around 5. There's not a lot of chloride in your urine. If it's greater than 20, you are peeing up heck of a lot of urine, don't you think? Let's see what's going to cause it. Causes of a saline, like I said, this is the, let's use green for this, saline sensitive and red saline resistant metabolic alkalosis and metabolic alkalosis this is the bread and butter of metabolic alkalosis so what's going to cause saline sensitive metabolic alkalosis check this out you guys are going to come to the emergency room. It's going to do something like this. Oh, what? I'm just trying to take a history of physical, and this guy just peeped on me, man. Why? What have I done wrong? He's like, Doc, I've been vomiting for the past five days. I'm like, damn. That's a long time. You still got the guts to come in and puke on me again? He's like, Mom, for, I'm sorry. I just can't hold anything down. What did I do? I just gave it away, guys. The first thing that's going to cause is vomiting. That means anything that makes you vomit, is, I mean anything. Like what? A 65 year old guy has been using ibuprofen for the past six years, develop NSAID gastritis, start to vomit from the irritation of his stomach. He vomits so much. I'm like, oh, dude, come on, we should give some prostaglandins to protect your belly. We didn't do that, we forgot. How about this? It's going to be a skinny chick. She's going to come in. 
She's about 16 years old. She's been trying to lose weight. She's been trying to lose weight. Guess what the sister's been doing? She sticks her tongue, a, a finger into her mouth every single day. She eats a little bit and she vomits all the time. She's going to develop metabolic alkalosis. That's it. That's one type of vomiting. If you develop any kind of gastritis, anything that causes you nausea and you vomit continuously, an alcoholic can come and start vomiting all over the place, guarantee you're going to... So people with bulimia, right? That was a lady. Or anorexia. Bulimia. Anorexia. Nervosa. Gastritis. But do you really need to memorize all this stuff? No. If you just know Bobby, then that's all you need to know. It's going to be another guy. Another way you can develop saline sensitive metabolic alkalosis. I haven't talked about the, the pathophysiology. This is what's causing it. Diuretics. Diuretics. What is it? Furosemite, classic. Thighs eyes. They're gonna dry you up. You got that's where the problem is. But we're gonna talk about the pathophysiology so it makes a little bit more sense. But remember, vomiting, diuretics. Vomiting, diuretics. Now let's go over the pathophysiology. Because that's where everything is gonna make some sense. Remember, this is the left part of our, this, well, that's my right, right part of our brain, this is the left part of my brain. So we are working with the right, at, right, right inside of my brain right now to figure out what exactly causes saline sensitive metabolic alkalosis. So the first thing that happens is the patient is going to vomit, right? There's little John with his mouth. Oh, he vomits. Right? Not cool. Happens to the best of us. Once they vomit, what's inside our stomach, right? Let's see. Here's his mouth. Esophagus. Goes into the stomach. Right? And the stomach, you got a duodenum, then you got a little bit of the pancreas. Inside the stomach is a lot of what? Hydrochloric acid. The pH of the stomach is too. I had a girl, I heard, I didn't see this. Actually, she got strangled by somebody. This is not good. Up to the point that she vomited so much of her acid that the acid actually chewed up my face. It's pretty bad. But, that's a sad story. I should have said that. But, that's to show you how acidic the stomach is. So, the first thing you do is you lose hydrogen chloride. You vomit it. So, basically, the first thing that's lost is this. Hydrogen ions are lost. Excessive vomiting. However, you're also losing fluids. Right? Because when you vomit hydrogen chloride, you vomit for so long, you're losing extra cellular fluid volume. Now, what happens is, let's say this is the amount I've lost. Right? I've lost a lot of hydrogen chloride. I lost a lot of hydrogens, I also lost a lot of chloride, which will explain why my chloride is not going to be a lot in my urine to start out with. Now, there's not enough sensor, because you have to realize when you eat, the hydrogen chloride, which is the acid that goes into the, into the duodenum, is what the pancreas senses it's like, oh no, we don't want a lot of acid inside the duodenum, because the pancreatic enzymes there's chymotrypsin, the lipase, you know that good stuff. That needs to come from the pancreas. They need to work in an alkaline environment. So automatically, once we lose all these hydrogen ions, there's no sensation for the pancreas to realize, ah, that's cool. We got a problem, you guys can go in. Then we retain the bicarb. Back to the formula. pH equals bicarbonate or hydrogen chloride over PaCO2. So what have we done? First thing we did, we lost this guy. We lost a lot of hydrogen chloride from vomiting. We retained so much bicarb because there's no sensor inside the duodenum for the pancreas to release the bicarb into the duodenum. So we retain them and they stay intracellularly in the plasma. Automatically, if the bicarb starts to go up, 
What will happen to your pH? Da -da -da. pH goes up. So we develop metabolic alkalosis. But do you think that is really the end of the story? No! No! Automatically, once you start to lose extracellular fluid, volume start to decrease, we've got a problem. There's decreased perfusion to your kidneys. The kidney is going to be like, geez, I'm not getting enough fluids, right? And this is going to drive you crazy because why do you have to always go back to where we started? The kidney is sitting there and not getting enough perfusion, right? There's not enough blood flow to the kidney because you've been vomiting so much. So automatically, what happened? Decreased perfusion to the kidney is going to sense what? Say it, you know it. You and I would know it. It's going to stimulate renin. The renin is going to be released. The renin is going to stimulate the angiotensin 1. Angiotensin energy is going to be converted to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is going to be converted to angiotensin 2 inside your lungs. And angiotensin 2 is going to do what? It's going to vasoconstrict. It's going to do what? It's going to go into your glomerular capillary and vasoconstrict the efferent material so, you can, so that you can increase your GFR to the kidney. But it doesn't, doesn't do that. That's not enough. It's also going to stimulate aldosterone. Aldosterone, that is the key. Aldosterone is exactly where we go with this. So automatically decrease ECF will stimulate the renin uh, angiotensin 2 aldosterone system that will stimulate aldosterone to be released and you guys know what aldosterone is going to do, right? I know. Aldosterone is going to go into the distal convoluted tubule. It's going to increase sodium reabsorption back into the body, but the problem is the dude doesn't care about the potassium, so you're going to be losing potassium. So you're going to lose hydrogen ions and potassium. Now let me explain this concept very well. You're losing a lot of potassium because the, the way hydrosterone works, it reabsorbs uh, I'm sorry, sodium and loses potassium. Now, when I talk about this side, when hydrosterone is going haywire, we can actually understand why you're losing both of these guys. But for now, what will happen if you lose a lot of potassium? You develop hypokalemia. Hypokalemia. And also, because you vomited all your chloride, your urine chloride is going to be low. So let's recap. What will be the end result? I vomit, right? I lose all my fluids. I don't get enough perfusion to the kidneys. The kidney senses, aldosterone kicks in. I lose potassium. So how do we end up with this story? We call it hypochloremic, which means I vomited all my chloride. So my chloride is oh, good. You get that? Hypokalemic because down in my kidneys, I lost all my potassium because aldosterone is like bam. Kick it in, kick it in, out the potassium, it's bringing out the sodium. Because why are you bringing in the sodium? You want to retain extracellular fluid volume. Because you're losing a lot of fluids, it's called extracellular fluid contraction. So you contract, but you don't want to lose too much fluid because you get dehydrated and it causes a lot more complications. Now, you develop hypochloremic, hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. How does that sound? So, let's erase this, because you probably heard that before. I did too, but I didn't know why. Now you do. Isn't that cool? That's what I do. I try to figure out the whys, so it makes some sense. So, we, at the beginning we said, the urine chloride is going to be low. That's how you're going to know. You look at the labs, you're like, geez, this guy's hypochloremic, because his urine chloride is low. Hmm, but he vomited it out. You look at the lab, it's hypokalemic. This potassium is like 2.5. It's pretty low. So we call it hypokalemic, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. That 
is told. But you know what? If you can't even remember that, because it's tough sometimes. I remember I said like, how to lose this. How to how to lose this. This is crazy. Whenever you how to lose this, if you just kind of look at the way the word is actually spelled out, and actually I'm going to put this in red so you can actually see, sometimes people can't see the trick I'm trying to pull here, okay, and low, <laughs> did you see that, so when you have metabolic alkalosis, the potassium is going to be low, that is my, do not steal it, I came up with that idea, alkalosis, so you're going to develop Hypokalemic, well, the chloride, you just kind of have to remember that, but I already told you about the pathophysiology. Hypochloremic, hypokalemic, metabolic alkalosis. Does that make some sense? Perfect. What is going to cause it again? You're going to be vomiting, you're going to be using a lot of diuretics. Now we're done with the right. Let's go to the left, to the left. That's right. Now let's go to the left hand side. Urine chloride. Very high. What is going to cause your urine chloride to be, oh, 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 oh. Do you want us to talk about treatment? No, we talked about treatment last because we always go about the physiology, clinical features, diagnosis. So we figure out the diagnosis of this guy. Urine chloride, extremely resistant. What will cause this? The most common cause of urine chloride saline resistant metabolic alkalosis is hypohydrosterinism. Where's aldosterone coming from? Hmm, let's see. Ah, I might not remember, but I'll tell you exactly what. No, I do remember. It's coming from the adren adrenal cortex, right? It's coming from the adrenal cortex. So we're talking about a kidney problem here with the little ice cream king cream. Of the, of the adrenal gland, and it's making too much aldosterone. It could be bilateral adrenal hyperplasia, or you just be an adrenal adenoma, just spitting out all this aldosterone. Before I go into that, this is endocrine, sort of, kind of. Too much aldosterone will cause what? Hmm, let's see. That means aldosterone is too high. Right? That is the key problem. So what I'm going to do is, this guy is going to come from here. Let's go into the kidney. Kidney looks something similar like this. It's actually a nephron. And uh, we go into the thick ascending loop of Henle. And eventually you go here. And then you come down to the distal. And you have the collecting duct. And remember, there's a bunch of tubules here. To make it a little bit more colorful, we're going to use some nice uh, color. Let's use the tubules um, pink. These are the renal tubule cells. Beautiful, cute little things. And on the other side of town is our blood vessel. I don't know why I use green, but it'll work. So, Right at this junction is where the main action is. That's the business end. Aldosterone, normally, it causes you to retain sodium and lose potassium. If you have too much of it, what is it going to do? It's going to create a lot of pumps here. And you're going to be reabsorbing a lot of sodium. But, guess who's going to be lost? A lot of potassium. You're going you're to be... Literally losing, so you become hypokalemia. Are you digging that? Good. You're losing a lot of potassium, causing hypokalemia. You're resorbing a lot of sodium. Also, you're retaining a lot of bicarbonate. So, patients with hyperaldosteronism, they're going to have hypernatremia. 
which actually is going to be mild, maybe like 146 or something. There's a reason why you actually don't develop severe hypernatremia because the intranatriuretic peptide inside your heart is going to see there's too much sodium being reabsorbed, like something's got to be going on. So it's going to release that, that's going to go into your kidneys, so you pee out some of the sodium, so you don't get way too much hypernatremia, which is going to cause you to get seizures, and you're going to have some big problems, right? But, so, I'm just going to dive right into uh, uh, endocrine a little bit. So you get hypernatremia, which is kind of mild. You develop hypokalemia because you're losing a lot of potassium. Now, remember the last time I was talking to you guys, I was like, oh, we're going to go over why you're losing both hydrogen ions and you're losing a lot of potassium. So we're going to think of it this way. This is the back of your house, and this is the front of your house. There's a little drainage in front of the house. That would be your blood vessel right here, and this is inside your cells. Now, because there's too much aldosterone and you're losing so much potassium, the body will be like, something is leaking at the back of the house. All the potassium is going through the bathroom and just flush down the drain while we need them. So, the, these cells are going to try to release potassium to replace. Because remember, if you don't have potassium, you've got hypokalemia, you get the flat waves, the U waves, and no, you get cardiac arrhythmia, you get to size the pointies, and you get ventricle atopic heart, I'm sorry, vent ventricle fibrillation, and people can die. It's pretty bad. So the body automatically starts to shoot out potassium into your blood vessels. But, in exchange for that, hydrogen ions are going to start what? Being pumped in. A lot of hydrogen ions are going to be exchanged for this potassium. However, what will eventually happen is these hydrogen ions are going to get kicked out on the other side. That's exactly what's going to happen. So you're losing a lot of potassium and then you start losing a lot of sodium. I'm sorry, but, but hydrogen ions. So what that brings us back, try to create some space here. We don't really need this part of the diagram. Is This is cellular resistant. So automatically, what you're going to see from our formula is this. We said bicarb hydrogen ions over PaCO2. Correct? That means we're losing hydrogen ions again. I'm sorry, again. We're back to the same thing. We're losing, but it's a different pathophysiology. See how the pathophysiology is different? We're losing a lot of hydrogen ions and we're retaining all this bicarb, and at the same time, we're retaining a lot of sodium. But, that will also cause us to keep our pH very high. On the flip side of things, though, we're losing all the potassium, so we're still going to develop hypokalemia, metabolic alkalosis. But in this case, we're also going to be losing a lot of chloride. A lot of chloride are going to be being pumped out from the tubules, and that's what's going to cause your urine chloride to be very, very hot. Because you can only retain the sodium, you lose a lot of chloride. Remember, normally, sodium chloride should be reabsorbed, but because you're making way too much aldosterone, you, you can only reabsorb so much chloride, so eventually you're going to be losing them back into the urine, and you start to pee it out. So, that's where the urine chloride is very, very hot. I hope you kind of got that concept. Too much aldosterone, so let's kind of recap. Too much aldosterone, you are up a lot of sodium, right? You're holding on to the sodium, you're holding on to the sodium. So the volume is what? Expanding. That's why they call it volume expand, ECF, which is extracellular fluid level expansion, compared to extracellular fluid contraction, because you're vomiting here. In this side of the building, aldosterone is what's causing the problem. You, re you retain so much sodium, you try to hold on to a lot of water, but you lose a lot of chloride in your urine, which causes your urine chloride to be very high. What will happen is you're also going to lose potassium because aldosterone is going to cause you to lose potassium and hydrogen ions, which we kind of talk about the intracellular exchange mechanism of way too much. Uh, when you have too little uh, aldo uh, potassium being lost inside the tubules, this cells try to secrete this, so you're still, actually you're still hypokalemic because you're going to lose a lot more than you think. 
because this has just trying to this has just a compensatory mechanism. But hydrogen ions always exchange for potassium. So this hydrogen ions gonna be pumped into the peritubular capillaries, right down to the tubules, and bam, you become hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. And the alkalosis is because you're also losing these hydrogen ions. And where did they come from? They have been exchanged for potassium. So you get alkalosis, mild hypernatremia, you get a little bit of headache, polyuria. Why? Because you're going to be peeing your brains out. You're losing a lot of chloride. Although you try to reabsorb to a, uh, you try to hold on to a lot of sodium, but eventually you're going to also be losing some sodium eventually, which causes you to pee out a lot. But that's just endocrinology. But the main concept here is to see where this hydrogen iron is being lost, which causes you to retain a lot of bicarbonate. So remember, once you lose this, you retain this, and your pH goes up automatically. That's the number one cause of saline-resistant metabolic alkalosis. What else can cause this? This is not a common disease, but you probably heard it on your boards in medical school. Batter syndrome. Crazy, right? Let's go over that. Real quick. Batters is another cause of saline resistance. This is a very complicated topic, so I'm trying to go as slow as possible so you can grab the concept. Batter syndrome is actually just like using a diuretic. Remember from renal physiology, you got a Proximal convoluted tube going down to the thin ascending loop of Emily. The thin ascending loop of Emily is going to bend and become the thick ascending loop of Emily. Look how big that is. In this junction, this is where you get the sodium chloride, I'm sorry, sodium potassium 2 chloride co transporter. And also in this junction is where calcium and magnesium is being absorbed. Some people we don't know why, can automatically develop the inability to reabsorb sodium and chloride. So if you can't reabsorb this sodium and this chloride, we've got an issue, right? Don't you think? So they start to lose a lot of what? Sodium and chloride. That means they're not gonna there's not gonna be enough sodium chloride to, you know reaching this area of their body. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're gonna lose a lot of this sodium and chloride, and once you lose that, what do you think is gonna happen? It's basically you're peeing out a lot of sodium. You're losing a lot of fluids. What the body's gonna do automatically is gonna sense aldosterone to be released. And once aldosterone is released, aldosterone will do what again? It's gonna reabsorb sodium, you're gonna lose potassium, right? You become hypokalemic. And once you lose, uh, when aldosterone starts to act again, you lose the hydrogen ions. And once the hydrogen ions lose out, you lose hydrogen ions, you retain bicarb, your pH goes up. But you're also losing sodium and chloride. And because you're losing so much sodium and so much chloride, look at that. Urinary chloride is going to go up. Just to make sure I'm not missing anything, because I kind of took some little notes here for you guys. Uh, let's see here. I think we pretty much covered that. Uh, so, batter syndrome, right? It's just basically inability of the kidney, thick acid and loop to develop sodium and chloride. You lose so much sodium and chloride, which is going straight to your urine, because you're peeing so much out, the renin angiotensin is gonna develop again because of decreased perfusion to the kidney, aldosterone kicks in, when aldosterone kicks in, you lose the potassium, you lose the hydrogen iron, when the hydrogen iron is out, bicarb goes up, pH goes up. Get it? Perfect. That is pathophysiology. In short, now let's talk about treatment. We've diagnosed this patient, they're going to come in, they're going to have a symptoms, the symptoms are going to be vomiting in case of urine chloride sensitive. In this case, they're going to have an endocrine looking like syndrome, like headaches, polyuria, you know, weakness. Oh, dog, I'm just weak. Why are they weak? Because they're losing so much potassium. That's why I kind of go over the pathophysiology before we head over to what I would diagnose this patient. Patient says they're weak, you check your heart and labs, and bam, the sodium is slightly high, their potassium is a little bit low. You kind of tell your blood pressure is actually elevated. You're like, man, that sounds like the endocrine, I mean, the adrenal gland is doing something wrong. Check the renin aldosterone level, 
Dawson is gonna skyrocket high. They're running a uh, uh, Dawson level. You know that is a problem. And automatically, how do we treat hypodosteronism? Two ways. If it's one gland, it's just acting up, ah, blue buddy. What do we do? We take it out. Surgically, it's called unilateral adrenalectomy. So, I'm going to erase this. This is actually step two material, but hey, you know what? You have nothing to lose. So, if you choose one gland, and there's just this little gland, we go in there, we cut it out. That's called a unilateral adrenalectomy. Which is just a fancy way of saying we went in there and we cut out the little adrenal genome. If it's two, if it's bilateral adrenal hyperplasia, which means you've got two clones and the entire gland is acting up. What do you want to do? A guy comes in to diagnose him primary hypoaldosteronism. You really gonna go in there and take both adrenal glands out? This guy's gonna go to crash, right? Because then he can't maintain his blood pressure. He's gonna go to hypertensive and he's gonna die. So we don't do that. We're not gonna cut this out because it's hyperplasia. What do we treat it with? Spinal relactone. Right? Block the receptors. If you block the receptors, yeah, you know what, slow everything down. That's how we treat that. One thing you have to understand about this side of our brain that we're talking about, which is the urine chloride resistance, is that it doesn't respond to extracellular We don't with, with to normal cellular. How do we treat this side? Of it? They lost that too much fluid. You give them normal cellular back. So when they ask you the hospital, patient has hypochloremic, hypokalemic, metabolic alkalosis, doc. Just get them 0.9 normal cell. Is that enough? No, it's not. Alkalosis. Alkalosis. They've lost the potassium. Give them potassium back. That is how we treat saline sensitive. Because it's sensitive to saline. So we get it saline back. Good. I like that. It's pretty straightforward. Hmm. You know what? There's something medicine. You come in something and missing. Oh, you know what? We put it back in. You go home. You feel good. And you see, it's not that you put it back in, you fix it, everybody's happy. Okay? Cool. Alright, so we've talked about metabolic alkalosis. I know this is a little challenging concept for a lot of people, but if you think about it, it's actually straightforward. On my right hand side, we are vomiting and we're using diuretics. On my left hand side, we're using aldosterone. It's too much aldosterone. And the aldosterone is causing too much problem. Don't worry yourself about bladder syndrome. Your odds of sitting there in the hospital is very low. Most people will come in with too much aldosterone because they have an adrenal adenoma or bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. Or, do you think everybody vomits? Yeah. Always remember medicine. The most common things are common. Don't sit there and try to memorize things that are not as common because when you become an intern and if you're a first year medical student, if you're a nursing student, you know, whatever area of medicine you are and you're learning this inflammation, think the most common part. Once in a while somebody comes in, throw a little cum ball. If you're smart enough and you know the pathophysiology, you might be able to track them down. Okay, on this note, I want to thank you for watching this video. If this is helpful, click the like button. I like this because this is what gets me excited. This is what allows me to keep making these videos. Uh, check out our website, www.future teacher physicians. Actually, that's uh, the name of us uh, of my uh, site, but it's f t p i n c dot org, and that's where I'm going to be putting up a lot of my videos. Uh, before you know, we're going we're doing big. You guys have requested a lot of videos, and I'm going to be making them for you guys as soon as possible. Uh, I want you to review this information again. We're going to be going over uh, respiratory acidosis in a few minutes. Uh, come back, check us out, search us on YouTube, and stay blessed. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Till I see you again. Future teacher physicians making medicine ridiculously simple and accessible. Mercy. Adios.
Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam. Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed out all the list of exam, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse pr practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and it'll take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, you're able to reach me directly, and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome, and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you wanna be a doctor, wanna be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.